Hi there and welcome to another King's Daily. My name's Toby, one of the leaders at King's and it's, um, I, hope you, I hope you're finding these times encouraging and helpful. Um, we're, we're currently working our way through the letter of Ephesians that Paul wrote, the Apostle Paul, and we're going to focus in on a couple of verses today from chapter 1 verses 7 to 8, which say this, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding in him in Christ this is a phrase that Paul uses throughout um, this this first chapter uh, of Ephesians he, he wants us to grasp and at the beginning he says in verse 3 that every spiritual blessing in Christ that, that the goodness of God comes to us in the person of Christ in all sorts of different ways and in this verse we read that there's wonderful forgiveness in Christ, there's this beautiful deal when we're forgiven, and I don't know whether you you've been on the receiving end when you know that you have wronged someone, that you know through your your actions or through the words that you've spoken that you have hurt another person, you've harmed another person, you've damaged a relationship through through what you've said or done, and then you go to that person with an admission of of guilt and admission of wrongdoing that I did get that wrong and, and I didn't do what was right there or what was good in that situation and I'm sorry for that and when that person genuinely forgives you um, there's, there's beautiful things that happen in those moments where there's that release um, from uh, a debt um, Miroslav Volf who's a theologian he says this that at the heart of forgiveness is the generous release of a genuine debt, the heart of forgiveness. There's a genuine, a, a generous release of a genuine debt, and when someone does that for us, they release us from that. We feel indebted to them beforehand. Um, there's a beautiful restoration of relationship, because um, our wrongdoing damages and fractures our relationships with other people. And there's beautiful reconciliation as, as we're brought together in relationship again, as we ask for forgiveness as we receive forgiveness and and the bible says that's the same with god it's the same with jesus and there's beautifully illustrated actually in a story where jesus is invited to uh, a pharisee's house called simon and um, when he's there a, a woman who it says have, has a reputation of living a sinful life she's present with him and and it says that she starts to weep over his feet and show this devotion to jesus in the house of Simon, this religious man, and, and Simon gets a bit stirred up by that, like doesn't he know, Jesus know what type of woman this is, that's washing his feet with her tears and her hair, and doesn't he know what she's like, and, and of course Jesus knew what her life was like, he, he knew what she'd done. And so Jesus then tells us a little parable to Simon and says to him, look, Simon, imagine there's two people, they're in debt to someone, one is in debt for say 50 quid, and one is in debt for say fifty thousand pounds, and and both of them are released from that debt. He says, which one do you think is going to love more? Which one do you think is going to be most grateful? And Simon says, well, the one who was released from the bigger debt, of course. And Jesus is like, yeah, you've you've answered correctly. And, and his his point is that this woman who she knew she'd done wrong, she knew she'd sinned, she knew she'd lived a life that was not the way that God had designed and would want for her and um, she'd gone against that and away from God and yet she'd come to Jesus and found this amazing grace in him and and Jesus said that you know her, her, that, that this her, the fact that she'd experienced forgiveness was being expressed through her devotion and her love and Jesus says that those that have known the forgiveness of God those that have been forgiven much they end up loving much she'd released been released from that debt, this, this generous release from a genuine debt, and she'd known that in her heart, and it spilled over into her devotion with Jesus. You see, Jesus' death on the cross, the Bible says, wipes out our sin. Jesus pays the debt for us. He gives us a clean sheet, and I love it that God doesn't, the Bible and Jesus doesn't just sort of say that these things we do wrong don't matter and that they're just kind of mistakes and little blips and shove them under the carpet. He deals with them head on, calls them what it is, but also pays the price for them as well. 
this wonderful forgiveness is at the heart of God when Jesus was on the cross and some of his last words were, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. These are the ones that drove nails into Jesus and this beautiful love and forgiveness comes out of Jesus' heart. This is the heart of God for each one of us to forgive us. Tim Keller puts it this way. He says, forgiveness means bearing the cost instead of making the wrongdoer do it so that you can reach out in love to seek your enemy's renewal and change. Forgiveness means absorbing the debt of sin yourself. Everyone who forgives great evil goes through death into a resurrection and experiences nails, blood, sweat and tears. Should it surprise us then that when God determined to forgive us rather than punish us for all the ways we've wronged him and one another, that he went to the cross in the person of Jesus Christ. Um, the Apostle John in 1 John uh, in 1 John 1 says this. Let me just read a couple of verses out to you. He says this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if we say, hey, no, I'm fine. I've never sinned. I've never done anything wrong. Well, actually, we just, of course we have. The truth isn't in us. If we confess our sins, well, God, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us, clean us up from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we claim we've not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word isn't in us. And then John says this, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he, Jesus, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Psalm 103 um, talks about this in verse 10, says that he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. Where wages of sin is death, where justice would be punishment for our sin, the the wrong things we do. And yet Jesus takes that completely upon himself. He takes our sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that in him we can be made right with God. We can be released from the debt. We can be restored to God. We can be reconciled to God. And so what's our response to this forgiveness? Well, I think there's a few we find in the Bible. One is joy. Psalm 32, verse 1 says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. To be blessed, to be happy, to have that sense of joy and peace that I am forgiven for the things that I've done. I think love is another evidence of knowing the forgiveness of God that as we saw in the story in Luke chapter 7, that woman where he who or she who is forgiven much will end up loving much. And I think that's seen in our, um, in our willingness to, to, to admit wrong ourselves, actually, that we're not trying to hide stuff that we do wrong. But also, um, and that's an expression of love to someone when, when we apologise to them. But also, I think, in the way that we forgive other people, that we are, when you understand what we've been forgiven for and we grasp the, the depths of our own sin and what God has done, then actually to hold things against other people when they wrong us, we, we can become quick to forgive. It doesn't mean it's easy to forgive. But Jesus said, you know, when you pray, pray, Father, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That it's the, the reaction of our heart that's filled with grace and the love of God is to forgive others when they wrong us as well. And finally, I think there's that gratitude that we're just grateful for the grace of God, really, because we were in a debt that we couldn't repay. We were in a pit and we couldn't get out of it. And and Jesus comes along, the Bible says, and redeems our lives from the pit. He brings us out of those places and he restores us and he reconciles us to God. um, And he releases us from this wonderful debt. And it just results in gratitude that it's all, as it says in this verse in Ephesians, in accordance with the riches of of his grace, his wonderful grace. At the heart of forgiveness is the generous release of a genuine debt. That's what God's done for us and we're hugely grateful and pray we live in the good of that wonderful grace and forgiveness today. Thanks.